And as we thought about the theme for this year, we settled upon this idea of decide. How many of you sense that there is something that is happening in America today? There's something that is changing, isn't it? And, and honestly, people don't know what to do with it. I'm not even sure what to do with it yet, all right? Um, but there is in our national political scene some things that are changing. There are some things I think that are positive, and there are some things that greatly concern me. I think things are happening even at our state level. And again, there are things that are positive and things that concern me. You see, when we're faced with a decision, there are directions we can take, right? And sometimes when we make a decision, we can make a right choice or a wrong choice. And sometimes things that are happening can end well or they can end poorly. I think back over some of the decisions that I've made in my life. I remember growing up, I used to love reading these little books where you could choose your own ending. How many of you remember reading those books, all right? Yeah, some of you do. And you, and you get to a point and you could say, all right, choose this path or choose that path, and it would change the outcome of the story. Now, the best part about reading those books was no matter how bad it ended, I could go back and pick a better ending, all right? Life is not always like that, though, is it? Oh, we wish it were. We wish every time we made a wrong turn, we made a bad decision, we could go back and undo that. We could go back and just change that course. It doesn't always work that way. I realize that many of us here today, even as we gather and we hear that term, decide. And as we talk about decisions that we make, that we can think of both positive and negative ones in our lives. There have been blessings and there have been cursings that have followed as a result of decisions we have made, right? And many of you will attest to the fact that you've experienced some of those things. In fact, if you were here last year, you may remember that we looked at Deuteronomy. And we looked at the book of Judges. And in this time, we began to talk about what is happening even in a national scene. And we saw that there are blessings of obedience and curses of disobedience. And we looked at how God deals with nations. And though we are not the nation of Israel, I believe there are patterns as how God deals with nations. And I believe that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, the people mourn. And certainly in our own history, we have seen some of both of those times. There have been difficult times to live in our nation, seeing some of those curses of disobedience. But let us not also forget that there are blessings of obedience. I want to skip back a little previous to where we've been looking last year and the year before. And that brings us to this theme in Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24, looking at verse 15, says this. In fact, let's just back up a little bit. Joshua chapter 24, verse 13. I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which ye built not, and ye dwell in them of the vineyards and olive yards which ye planted not do ye eat. Now therefore, fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the gods which your father served in the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We chose that theme to side not knowing how things are going to turn out in presidential politics, not knowing how things may turn out in federal elections and state elections, not knowing the state of the economy where things are going, not knowing what may happen tomorrow. But we choose the theme decide because the calling for us as Christians is to make a decision to follow the Lord whatever will may come. Amen? And so there is a time in which we have to make that decision ourselves to say, we will choose to follow. You see, Joshua gave the people of Israel a choice, if you will. And, and as the Lord is speaking here, and as Joshua is, is, is saying these words, and as God is speaking to this nation, they have a choice. 
and laid before them as the choice to serve the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God who has seen them through so many things. As you look through the book of Joshua, you see Joshua 23, Joshua 24. There's an accounting of the history of how God has delivered his people, how he has spared his people, how he saved his people, how he's provided for his people. And God has seen him through all them through all these things, just as God has seen us through all these things. How many of us can think right now of something we're going through, some challenge, some difficulty, and we wonder how God's going to get us through it? And yet as you think back, has God ever failed to get you through the other challenges and difficulties you have crossed in your life? In Joshua, we have the history recorded and recounted of what has occurred and what has occurred and how God has provided and God has cared for and God has met the needs of his people. And Joshua says, after all this, after all this, Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. Either the God you know or the God's little g of the land. And I want you to think about that. Because the challenge in America today is not a choice between God and a godless nation. Although we often think it is. We think it's a choice between God and a godless nation. It's not. It is a choice between which God we will serve. For we will all serve a God. The gods we serve today have different names than they did in ancient Israel, but they are still gods we serve. For some people, they're going to serve the god of economic security. And they're going to believe that their wealth and their security is going to come in Wall Street or in their bank accounts, their 401ks, might come in the equity in their home. They're going to believe that their security comes in those things. For other people, they might believe that our greatest security comes from our military. i got to tell you, we've got a speaker coming up today at 1 o'clock you do not want to miss as he's just entered the room. He'll be speaking later today. He's going to talk about national security. But what I love about this man is he does not say that our security comes in our military. He recognizes it comes in God alone. And there are people today, though, who think that our security comes through a simple military matter. There are people today who struggle in all kinds of areas of security. And so they worship other things. We find a culture today that struggles with their own security, and so they seek to find it in so many other ways. Some find it in drug and alcohol abuse. If you pay attention to the headlines, you'll realize this is a major issue that the legislature is trying to deal with this year. Heroin. How do we deal with all the abuse that is going on? How do we deal with the number of deaths that are coming from this? And we're looking for new laws and new ways to prevent heroin deaths. And that's admirable. Great. Let's try to find something to fix that. We struggle with ethics today, right? And so we've got a legislature trying to write a new law to fix the ethics problems. Or, quite honestly, cases where we're probably trying to avoid new ethics legislation. How many of you realize we don't need a new ethics law? We need new hearts. And when our hearts are changed... then things begin to look different even in our legislatures. And so the challenge that Joshua lays out is choose ye this day whom ye will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As we choose this theme and as we think about this throughout the day, we're going to bring you news of legislation. We're going to tell you about some of the fights that are coming up, some of the victories we've had, some of the challenges we're facing, some of the ways that our organization is looking to adapt to make sure that we're able to be all that God has asked us to be in this generation and this opportunity to speak for him in this place. And frankly, it's a complex problem. I wish I could come before you and say, if we just did A, B, and C, everything would be all set. It's much more complex than that. But at its core is the decision that we as the body of Jesus Christ in this state and gathered in this room today have to say we will decide to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. This day we will choose to follow him. Joshua in Joshua chapter 23 and 24 has got to be nearly 110 years old. He dies 110. I believe this message is brought shortly before his death. And so he is uh, in those latter years of life. Do we have anybody here approaching 110 today? Well, we could all raise our hands, we're approaching, all right? You know, but where we are in the spectrum may be different, all right? Joshua has has seen a lot of things, hasn't he? Through 110 years of life, he has seen how God has provided, God has cared for, God has led his people. And as he stands up or as as he sits in the chair, whatever position he's in, as he gives this statement, this address, 
He makes the case for why this people can trust God and why this people can put their confidence in God whenever it comes. And he tells them of the challenges that are ahead. They're going into a land where there are going to be challenges. And yet through it all, there is a God who will be there with them. I cannot tell you today how things will turn out next week, next month, in November, or next year. But I can tell you this. The God I serve will be there with us. He will see us through it. And I refuse to worship the God of politics. Do you realize that as Christians today, we can get caught up in that? We can get caught up in thinking that if we just have the right presidential candidate, we'll talk about that today. If we have the right presidential candidate, well, that'll fix all the problems. It won't. We've had Christian presidents, and we're still here. If we just get this person elected, if we just have this, if we just have that, well, it's true that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. And when the wicked, when the wicked rule, the people mourn. But our salvation does not come through that political figure, whoever it might be. It comes through the person of Jesus Christ. Whatever else you hear today, we want to start with this tone. We are here to influence legislation and legislators for the Lord Jesus Christ. We wish many of the laws of the land were different. We will strive to change them. But we will never say that if we just change a law, will have changed the hearts and minds. It takes a touch of God's Holy Spirit to move this people. And so my prayer, and your prayer I hope, is that God will move in a powerful way in this state, that we will see hearts and minds change as they come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, as they're discipled in who Jesus is, and that yes, eventually even the laws of the land and the culture begins to change because the people are changed through the power of Jesus Christ. The reality is every single one of us is a sinner. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> we all have fallen short of God's standard. And I recognize that even all of us coming in this room today may not realize that, but every single one of us is a sinner. And I don't care what title goes before your name or what uh, degree goes after your name. You're a sinner. And you can be a senator, you can be a governor, you can be a doctor of whatever. But if you don't know Jesus Christ, you have no home, no hope in heaven. Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through him. And so our invitation to you today is this. Ask me about Jesus. There is nothing else we would rather share with you and speak with you about today. I can um, wax eloquent about Senate bills such and such. I can tell you all about the budget. We can talk a $15 minimum wage. We can talk about all sorts of issues that are going on. But there's nothing I would rather talk to you about today than Jesus. And so if you are here today and you say, who are this crazy group of people that I thought I came out to hear all about the politics, what's going on in Albany? Oh, you'll get your full of that, I assure. But if you leave here and you don't get the fact that you got to know Jesus Christ, we've missed it. And so I challenge you today, as we begin this day, do not look to the law to change our land, but look to the Lord to change our land. <laughs> Choose ye this day whom ye will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's stand in a word of prayer.